Welcome to the Odyssey of Petal and Moth, Tales from an Underdog Film. My name is Colleen Furlot, and it's a pleasure to be here with you again. Today's guest took a little searching for, but when I found him, I knew immediately that he was the one. Aside from being a natural talent, he has a warm and almost shy presence that's as captivating on camera as it is in person, and his layers run very deep, which is evident in his song lyrics. He has a lulling voice and an honest delivery. I am very happy to have the opportunity to introduce Ryan Hillier. Hello. Hello, Ryan. Now I have to live up to all these expectations. You this do. Very, very... <laughs> Are you blushing? A little bit. <laughs> you sort of match the curtains yeah. behind you. My red curtains. <laughs> We're sitting in Ryan's living room, which is uber cool because he has a, like a big album collection. Somewhat vintage, I'd say. I've got a few. I got a few things. It's a lot of old stereo gear, and uh, yeah, a lot of records. I this is that's that's the main focus of uh, what I do. So I just this is like a comfort comfortable space for me. Yeah. So Ryan's a musician. <laughs> yeah. in, in case that wasn't evident. So his relation to the film, your relation to Petal and Moth. Mm -hmm. So I needed a musician for a short scene in the film. Yes. And. Strangely, I had a very hard time finding someone. I had a very hard time finding you at first. Mm. I, which is weird because I used to be quite connected to the music community here, but I think I think yeah. over time I just lost touch with who some of the newer musicians were. For and sure. we were talking about this before before we started recording. But you and I would have many times probably been at the same place at the same time. Most likely. Cross paths. We we have friends in common. We went to a lot of the same places. But I had never seen you or heard of you. Mm. And so the the way this happened, um, the scene was actually inspired by this beautiful mural in Riverview on the uh, on the boardwalk and behind the, the Chocolate River Station. So there's a an art festival every year where they call it Festival Inspire. Inspire Festival. Inspire yeah. Festival. And they paint these beautiful murals and my favorite one is on the back of this building in Riverview and so I was walking there one day and that's where I had the inspiration to do the scene in the film where there would be a musician playing so a strange little series of events led me to a list of up-and-coming musicians who were playing at the Buddha Bear mm. in Alma yeah and I started going through the list because I thought okay well I don't recognize these names, but it's... It's, it's a just, starting point. It's a starting point. So I went through the list. I would find, you know, check out the name, find either their website or their band camp page. Yeah. So, and then I would check it out and then note this wasn't the right person. I made my way down the list and all of a sudden there was a Ryan Hillier. And so I found... I can't remember what how I landed on a very nice page. Mm. I don't remember what the page was. It looked like maybe a full album's worth of songs. Yeah, a black background. Yeah. Is that Bandcamp? That might be Bandcamp. Bandcamp. Yeah, that might be my, that might be my website. Maybe, maybe Could that's where I landed. Dot net if you yeah, want to so I was like, oh, he's he's cool. I like the way he looks. He's got great hair. Great hair, Thank but you. but can he sing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's always a good question to well, ask. But the funny thing, what because I have to say that not, um, yeah, not not everyone appealed to me, and right. it's not so much a question of talent, but I was looking for a specific. While well, I'm saying looking, I was listening for a specific sound, and I right. I couldn't even really explain what it was. I just knew that I would know it yeah. when I heard it. Yeah, yeah. So I saw this list of your songs, and. And the one that, that I played was the last one. Yeah. Because it stood out to me for some reason. There was something about the name of it, the simplicity of it. Yeah. I don't know. It somehow just pulled me in. And as soon as I hit play, like before I even heard your voice, I was like, that's the one. That's cool. And then you started singing and I was like, oh, I, d I didn't even have to like get to the chorus. I was right. just like, I need to have this guy. Well, that's that's good to know. Yes. It's good to know that that... Uh that worked. Yep. So, what is the name of the song? That song is I. I yours. It's called Apple Tree. Yes. That's the last song on uh, the last album I did, which was called In the Shadow of the Chapel. That's the last song on that one. Beautiful. Which is actually a really old song. That's that's one of the first songs. One of the first group of songs I ever wrote. So. Well, we will get into uh, yeah. maybe the time frame of that later because you sure. do have a bit of an interesting background in terms of your career in music. Mm -hmm. So I think I sent you a message on. July 28th, 
through the wonders of Facebook, I found you yeah. on there, found your artist page mm -hmm. and sent a message and said, you know, I'm an indie filmmaker. I'm looking for someone, blah, 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 crossed my fingers. And I heard back and you said. I said, I'm pretty sure I was, I was like, I'd love to. Yay. Yeah. So it was a pretty easy shoot. It was, it didn't take us too long. I think you sandwiched no. it in like a period of like you had to go to work and you had I'm pretty sure, this yeah. much time before you had to go to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I usually, if I work at night, which I think I did that day, I worked at three and I think it was on a sat. was it on a Saturday? I don't remember. I don't remember either. Anyway, but um, yeah, so we did that in a couple hours. It was pretty, it was pretty, it short. Was pretty efficient because you were, you were. You were pretty on the ball. Mm. We did get one cute little blooper out of you where yeah. you, I think you forgot your own words or something. <laughs> yeah, that happens. That That's happened often, <laughs> trying to reduce that part of the show. Yeah. But I usually always do that at least once. It's cute. It made it onto a little blooper reel that I did <laughs> as a like a little surprise thing for a, a small party that I had at my house when the trailer came out. Mm. So I'll... Wait, that was like quite a fun little thing that we got to watch. Um, so yeah, it went it went really well. It went really smoothly, and it was a a really like beautiful, easy scene to edit because we had everything that we needed there. Yeah, it was super cool. I was I was just happy to be involved. It was a it was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful yeah, day. It was neat. And then I asked you if we could actually make uh, a film trailer with it. There are two mm -hmm. film trailers for Petal and Moth. And the longer one was actually made with... Yeah, that was very cool. I was very honored by that, so thank you. It was lovely, and it you play the song in full. We caught it live. It plays in full in the film, and it's wonderful. Yeah. I only learned after the fact, when you and I spoke a few times as we were getting to know each other after the project ended, what the song was about. Because, you know, I, I, I picked it without really listening too much to what the words meant, right. yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, not that I, I'm actually very interested in lyrics, but I think I just had so much going on that I didn't have time to like really listen until, you know, things die down. And as I was editing, I was like, wait a second. Yeah. So do you want to, I just think the story of the song is so interesting because you do, you, you, um, present a very interesting take on right. the situation. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Basically, it's a very, very basic you know folk song structure of of you know three chords and and uh three verses and two two or three choruses and that are all the same and uh but it is basically i think at the time and i've i've always i think i've always been fascinated by um history and specifically like um military history wars and things like that i think that comes from uh growing up in a house where my dad was a very avid reader. And so a lot of the books that he would have around were, um, you know, Pierre Burton books and Farley Mowat and, and these type of things. And so that's something that I think was just always in, in my sphere of influence. So, uh, but I just, I decided to write this song about, uh, somebody who was, who gets together with somebody and then that person goes off to war and they, they, you know, as often happens throughout, you know, history throughout time, th these people don't come back. So it's the, it's that uh, theme of just like s of separation and, and, uh, and not knowing. And so that, that's the, that's the story of the song is, is somebody falls in love and with another person and then th that person goes off to war and they don't, uh, they don't come back. And so the, the twist of the song is that it's, you know, in typical fashion in, you know, f folk music, it's it had historically been the men going off to fight and, and the women staying home and then, you know, s singing about how those those people don't come home. So just a very simple little trick is to flip that around and just to say that it's the woman who has gone off and, and the, you know, the man is, is home and not doesn't know where uh you know his his partner is so i don't know if that was a conscious choice or or if it was just i i just th threw it in there just cuz it was unconventional well, I, think. I i thought it was really interesting once once i listened to the lyrics and realized that you had done that that flip of of the traditional story mm. because you know that story also exists with the you know the the man who goes off to sea and the woman yes. who's walking the shores Very or the widow's walk. Very popular theme in this, part of, the, in this yeah. part of the world. Because for anyone listening, 
outside of, I guess, the outside of Canada who doesn't know where New Brunswick is. We are a maritime province. We're, we're on the water. Mm-hmm. We're sandwiched between, well, we have Quebec above us, Maine to the left, PEI to the right, and Nova Scotia beneath. And yeah, we're, we have a lot of coast so that that story, there are yeah, the, like the widow's walk. You very know, the, yeah, it's very very prevalent. In yeah, a lot of folklore and folk music for sure. So I think it's interesting that you you flipped it and had the man waiting for the woman, mm. and then how you did this, you you pulled in this idea of the apple tree. Yes, yeah, it's it's that's the that's the the thread that kind of runs through the whole the whole song is that they uh, there's this this tree that they. Uh, meet by or is just central to their lives and then um through th- you know as time goes on the the and the you know woman goes away and then uh the apple tree uh you know at the end of the story is dying because it uh isn't being nourished by their love i think that's Aww. the general idea the image that you know you 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 can kind of pull from that it's open to interpretation that's why i think it it's it's uh that's why i think it people like it well, you also did one of those tricks too, where it's deceiving because the song is very sweet and sort of upbeat sounding, mm-hmm. but it's actually at the end, it's quite sad. It's quite sad. So you yeah. get really pulled in. It's almost like you're tricked. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if that. Uh, I don't. I don't know if that was intentional. It's. I think that's just a little bit of Shakespearean tragedy mm. in in that in that regard. So, because yeah. I mean, that's that's. I think that's always been compelling throughout history. Is that you know, turn of, turn of events. Cause I know I've always, I've never been one for like super happy songs anyway. So not typically. Yeah. I think I'm the same way. <laughs> I was, I was in during that writing period, I was definitely more inclined to just write tragic, uh, yeah. R- tragic romantically themed music yeah. and lyrics. So well, sense. speaking, speaking of which, mm-hmm. why don't you talk a little bit about your career? Because I find it's interesting that you started, later in mm-hmm. life than I guess most people do. Yeah, I mean I I didn't start writing and performing until I moved here to Moncton, which was um probably almost ten years ago. So I'd always loved music and I'd always been interested in music since I was a since ever since I was a kid. I have uh I actually have a tape here of me <laughs> that my uh, my mother found and and sent to me so I could digitize it for her uh, of me because I used to make tapes all the time. I'm sure any any kid that uh, anybody who is over 35 or around that age will will be familiar with this is making I made tapes. Yeah, making mixtapes tapes and <laughs> yeah. taping taping songs off the radio and things like that. So television I, commercials. Yeah, absolutely. So I have a whole tape of me. I don't know how old I was, maybe 8 or 9. I don't I don't exactly know, but it's me uh, doing an entire radio show, just improvising an entire radio show with with, you know, a main DJ and then a weather person and guests and songs being made up and commercials and interviews and it goes on for forty five well, <laughs> almost a whole side one side of a tape. So uh I should just turn this all over to you. <laughs> <laughs> but that that that's my that and I'm actually gonna put a bit of that I think on the on the new album which we'll get into. But oh, that's um fun. that I've I listened to that recently and I was like I've always been interested in this stuff. I was always been interested in sounds and and putting stuff on tape and just messing around with that. And uh I just always loved listening to music and my first exposure to music was in church. Like that was my my family went to church and uh so we would sing and and uh me and my buddy would, you know, make up silly lyrics to the hymns and all mm-hmm. that stuff and and but I but I always loved it. I've always like that's been a as such an inspiration throughout my life but I never I never created you know music until I moved here and uh going out and I had gone out to see a band and when I lived in Edmonton before I moved back to the east coast this is a few years uh, back and uh, it was the divorcees who um I've now become friends with and we've worked together and uh and these guys played at a bar that I used to go to and I was like, this is so cool that like, that's, that's really neat. I, I would, you know, I, I was kind of crystallizing in my mind that that's what I wanted to do. I wasn't really sure what, how I was going to do that or what it was going to be, but I was like, I think I'm going to 
you know, move back east. I want to make music. How did the songwriting come in into play? I, I don't really remember. I think it literally was because I've always been, I've always loved writing. And I think that's really what I am is like uh, now that I look at, you know, my whole kind of track narrative getting to this point, it's like it's just writing. Like I love I love reading and I love uh, I love things that are well written. And so it's always been just my kind of way of interpreting. It's an interpretation. So it's it's always just been about that and wanting to write as much as possible and just write and just to write well. And I think music, I saw that as the easiest way to do that. Well, it's funny because I can tell in your songwriting that you write. It's evident in your lyrics. Yeah, that to me, that's always been the, it's always been the most um, meaningful part. Like the music is so powerful and, and it, it's, it's really, um, it takes a lot of effort and time and, and dedication and, 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 um, uh, focus to just make things move and, and move in, in a dramatic way and, and to write emotive, you know, music, but the words have always been the most, uh, the most, you know, important part because that's the part that we relate with. You know, we, we relate with what's being said. We relate with that, the messages and, and the stories because as, you know, human beings, we just, we love stories. We love movies. We love books. We love, you know, we love people's stories. That's, that is, that is the thing that we really are interested in. And that's the the most engaging thing is stories. And, and we love to listen and experience other people's, other people's experiences and other people's lives. And, you know, it's, it's a way to say, this is the way I see things, you know, and then to have people come back to you and say like, oh, I see that too. Or, that's how I feel, and because I've had those experiences so many times where I've been listening to something, be like, "That's how did you know?" You know, like you have those moments with with art where you're like, "That's that's me." It's that thing where you see yourself in something that somebody else has made, and it just it makes you feel not alone. It's I I think that's really powerful. I was speaking in an earlier podcast with Nancy King Schofield, who's a visual artist, and we were talking about how when an artist of any type creates art so whether it's a writer who's writing or a musician who's creating music or a visual artist who's creating a piece of some sort or filmmaking Mm. you're putting your emotion or and or your story into creating something that you can then hand over to someone else to experience and for some reason yeah there it's very powerful when you have a sense of shared experience or understanding it's also powerful to have a sense of an experience that you've never had before i think mm-hmm. that, that that's the maybe the escapist part of art particularly i guess film and and writing um things that are very story based yeah we just i, I guess at the base of it all is is human connection you yep. and i have had conversations about this yes yeah the fact that we live in a you know, a, a hyper connected world, but, but there's a lot of feeling of disconnection and yeah. there's a lot of hunger for meaningful yeah. connection and, yep. and we can get that through art. It's always been powerful that way. Yeah. So maybe we need it now more than ever. I, don't I, know. Bl- I believe so because it is, it's that, it's the, it's the value of, it's the value of that connection. And it's like, it's, it's, I, what I really want is something that it makes me uh, feel something about what it is to be a human being and, and to really, that makes me think about a totally different way of um, of experiencing life. That, that's, those are the real great moments when you get something that hits you, you know, directly and it, and it just reaffirms everything that you've been kind of thinking about. And I've, I've had those, had those moments. And so, and I think the 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 to get back to you know where I was at in writing stuff when I was starting to get into it, it was just it was it was escapism in a way that I just wanted to I wanted to be in I wanted to be inside music and I didn't really understand I didn't know how I was going to do that but I I knew that it, I wanted to you know tell stories and and to do that kind of thing so I just grabbed a hold of what was kind of around me and the sounds that I was most familiar with 
the fact that I wasn't trying to do a specific thing was the reason that I was able to do what I did because I just, I, I didn't have any preconceived notions about what exactly I wanted to do. I was just doing what I felt was, you know, what felt good to me. So I think that's, I think that's really important if you are starting to do anything is, is to really do what feels good for you. And that's, been more and more important to me than as I've gone on because it has to start there it has to start with me you know liking it and having it as a form of expression and and uh well that's what art is if I think if we if we do art to please other people if that's the primary focus it it's not I don't know I think it's a slippery slope because yeah. art is self-expression. Of course you want to reach people with it. Mm-hmm. And that's the power of it once you put it out there. Yeah. But the power of it for yourself is 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 honesty yeah. and is just being true to who you are and what you're going to create. Regardless of, you know, if it's really strange, mm-hmm. if it's really, you know, not mainstream, if it's very fringe, whatever. I think it's, we need all of it. We need yeah. all styles and all. Yeah. Well, you want it to, you want it to be, ideally you want it to be everything. Like you want it to be self-serving and you want it to, if you want it, you want it to be self-serving and you want to be okay with sharing it and you want that sharing to be done in a, in a way that you're good with. And And you you hope that they. And you want it to be accepted. Yes. You know, if you can get all of those things in place and also, you know, in, in, in mesh that with, you know, the ability to, to distribute it in a wide array you know, you've got it made. So, and there are artists, that, artists that do that. I think that, I think success is just something that people really need to think about a lot more and that what that actually means. How for, you define success. Yeah. What it means for you, because if, yeah, you should figure that out. Do you, how do you define success? To me, I'm already, I've been, I'm, I'm already successful. I was successful 10 years ago when I started. I was successful when I wrote my first song. I was successful when I wrote my first record. I was successful when I recorded it and put it out and so went on a, and went on a you know tour. Is success to you um, completing uh, something that you begin, or is it being to me true? Is it combination of that? To me, success is is it's a daily thing. It's it's and I think that you can say this for expression, and you can also say this for you know life. And that's another thing is we can get into too is like, but in terms of just our artistic expression and, and projects and things like that, for me, I'm successful today. Like I have a record that I'm working on and it's not out yet, but, uh, you know, I don't, my success doesn't depend on that. You know, it's like if, uh, if it doesn't, if it doesn't do well, I'm still successful because I'm happy with it. My definition of success is it's evolved over the years, thankfully, because I think when I was younger, I had the typical definition of success, which was that, you know, you had to have great acceptance and accolades. Mm. And um, but for me, success is action. Yeah. So it's like if to me, in a way, failure is a form of success, because in order to fail, you have had to actually yeah. take a chance and try something. Yep. It's it should be risky. Yeah. Like that's where that's what the most fun is to me. It's like I n- I don't ever want to get to a place where I'm comfortable and I continue to be comfortable. You know, that doesn't that's not how I grow. That's not how I how I continue to do things that are interesting to me. It's like I think it's I think it's I think people some people do that and that's fine and that's that's for them. Mm-hmm. Um, because everybody does it their own way. If that's, if that's how you want to go, that's fine. But I I just always want to be, I want to be challenging myself and I want to be challenging what I'm doing. Um, I don't, uh, I don't want to shy away from something because it's seems hard the first time I do it, or it seems like it's a difficult, um, you know, task to get into, or it might be a long time to figure out or, you know, because for, I just want to work like that's that's a that's an inherent uh, just thing that that's built in. I think that's, uh, you know, I come from old old country Scottish lineage and I think it's just a familial hereditary thing. It's it's 
I understand the world through working and, and to, and it makes me feel good. I'm the same way because if someone had told me a number of years ago that I would make independent film with next to no money, which means that I basically have to do every single thing I can do. I have to fulfill every single role I can fulfill. Otherwise the project won't happen. Mm. I, I don't think I would have believed them because it's even talking about it, it's extremely overwhelming to me to think about what I have to do to pull off a project like yeah. Petal and Moth. Yeah. Which is why I play the lead actress, which is, you know, why I'm the director and the editor and write some of the music. And it's because it needs it. And if I'm able to do it, I do as much as I can. And then I get other people to fill yeah. in the spaces. But it's very over. It's overwhelming. But it I, be, yeah. I agree with you. I think it's just when I think back to my childhood, I was also one of those kids that, you know, recorded these kind of elaborate you know, I, I was always an organizer and I would create shows and events. And so I think it was just it, it was in me. But bringing things back to the film. Yes. And yeah. speaking about music and the power of music. I think one of the most powerful aspects of music and any art, but I think music is just it has such widespread appeal mm -hmm. is the ability to heal. Yes. And Petal and Moth is it plays out as a romance. Yeah. It plays out as, a, I guess, a romantic story, a story of connections, because the two main characters have this connection, and, and there certainly is a romantic element to it. But it, it is, at the basis, a story of healing. And I know that that's a key theme in your recent, uh, your, your soon-to-be-released album. Yeah, yeah. So maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. And just uh, to your point about about the, the, the vision of a feature film, it's I think the your imagination has a a big appetite sometimes <laughs> so it's it's it it changes from from time to time and so it's it is it can be yeah it can be overwhelming when you have a big a big appetite you know vision imagination kind yeah of i don't even know if it's an appetite it for me it, it just it always seems to land in this big gigantic like package on my front step and i'm like oh my god not again <laughs> no 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 could you just like fit in my mailbox right yeah 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 <laughs> I'm scared to open it because I know once I do, it's like I can't, right. it won't let me go. You so, got to go all the way to the bottom. Yeah. So we went in this one. I'm <laughs> back out. I survived. <laughs> but yeah, if you could, if you could talk yeah. about um, the healing power of, of music and how that relates to your life and your yeah, album. Because I believe your album's quite autobiographical. It is in a way. And, and yeah, there's a bunch of, there's definitely a, a running theme of, of, um, of, self-examination of reflection and and uh of healing on there um because of the the time the where i decided to make the record i was just in a very I was super difficult place because i had just gotten out of a, a really uh bad relationship and and made a decision to leave and i was living in a my band's tour vehicle in a friend's driveway and just the you know it was a very uncertain kind of uncertain time and I wasn't even sure if I didn't I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to keep doing music because in that kind of headspace you're like well it, you know look where I'm at like look at what look at what this has brought me you know this is what this is terrible sometimes that's where the best stuff comes but, from though it's hard to see that in the moment because it's hard 100%. to think of putting that out but yeah that's 100 percent, and it was just like well I don't even know if I'm going to keep doing this but I made the decision like, well, I might as well do, you know, one more thing and then, and then that's it. So I decided to, you know, start making this album. And, um, and so, yeah, it's, it, it, when I finished the demo of the album, which was in April of, uh, what year is it? <laughs> 2019, <laughs> which was in <laughs> April of 2018, um, yeah, I it was just this wonderful moment of catharsis and uh of of just um happiness and just and and um success. You know, I I felt very good because it was like uh it was just a demo, but I was like I set out to do what I wanted to do and expressed all the things that I wanted to express and and it was a very yeah, it was a very cathartic kind of process to write to write that album. So, the new album. Yes. 
since we're since we're here, yes, yes, let's let's talk about it. Because Absolutely, it's, it's going to be coming out soon. It's exciting. Yes, it's called No Excuses. It's uh, it's I recorded this with um, Chris Colpaw at his studio just up the road here <laughs> uh, in, Riverview. in Riverview, and uh, had uh, the guys from the Divorcees played uh, played on it. And that's interesting how that kind of came full circle. Yes, that was really cool because. Um, yeah, because it's it's that thing where you you have you know I finished the demo and I was happy with it and I was just like okay I mean I'll just I'm I'm happy with this and then um, but there's always that thing it's like oh well what if you know what what if you took it even further so and then I sent it to the guys and they were interested and so we started rehearsing you know arranging stuff and then uh, you know we got you know, the idea to, to go to Chris's and, and to have him record it and, and take it into a whole other kind of, uh, kind of space. And, and it, that's been really awesome, kind of blowing it up really big and grandiose a little bit, but, uh, maintaining the, 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 the core influence of what I was trying to get to. It's, it's awesome to go through that whole process and to have it retain the original, which is the point it's like to have it retain the original you know almost the original intent that I had when I came up with it but just to hear it in such a in such a big way it's really it's been very cool you know I've I've never been one especially with this project I wanted to have everybody's influence on it I didn't want it to be just oh I you know I did this this way and this is how it's got to be done I really wanted to just open it up like the structure of the songs are all the same and that there's things that I want that uh to sound like and there's you know my my uh personal preferences for how things should go but I really wanted to get everybody's input and get everybody's little twists on there because all those people are so talented and and just have their own flavor I think there's a parallel to when you go from writing a song in the privacy of your own space mm. to then taking it into a studio and working with other people. There's a parallel to filmmaking in the sense that when you're creating art in this way, there's definitely like a collective experience as opposed to, say, like a visual artist who very often works in solitude or a writer mm. very often works in solitude. It's interesting because when you're working with other people, you get this infusion of all the, these other energies mm -hmm. and um, influences, and it can it can shape it, it can send it into directions that you weren't anticipating. And sometimes, like it's it's so much. Actually, hopefully, often it's it's so much the better for it. Absolutely. Like in the film, for example, the character of uh, the male the male lead, who the character's name is David. He was that character was inspired by two people that I that I know, and I, I had a very clear idea of who I thought this character was. But when Jordan Jardine stepped into the role, he brought so much of his own personality that it, it the character morphed mm -hmm. into this really like almost a more beautiful version of of who he originally was because he had all these other little interesting idiosyncrasies and yeah. and traits that that weren't there originally. So I think it's interesting when when it when it works well, it c it can be really wonderful. That's the great that's the great part is when you can leave that space for for people to just kind of play around with it and because they're gonna hear something or see something or whatever that that maybe you didn't see or maybe you you know you you wanted but you didn't know you wanted you know like yeah, that's that's been the thing with the the record is having all these things come come into it without me even saying it. And those moments are are really cool when people can bring that th that thing that you were you were thinking, but you didn't really know you were thinking it. Yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah, very excited to for the launch and and to hear it. Um, it's it's just interesting. I thought of something kind of funny while you while you were t talking there because I when I write music, I'm not um, I actually don't play any instruments and I I don't record. So I write and then I hand it off to John Marr, mm. who is the co-producer of the film project of Pedal and Moth. He does all the audio and he's done all of the recordings that I've ever done. We have a long history of playing music together, and almost every time that I write something and give it to him and I hear him working on it, I'm like slightly freaked out. Like, or I'm just like, what the heck is he doing with right. it? Like, that's not what I wanted. And in the end, 
he like so nails it that I'm yeah. just like, what was I thinking? Like, I, I just need to learn to trust him, but yeah. I'm always freaked out. And I think it's just, it's maybe it's hard for me to, to let go yeah. and hand a baby over to it's, someone else and just go like, okay, I'm going out now <laughs> and I'm not going to call, you know, five times throughout the night. I'm actually just going to go out. Right. It's that and initial apprehension. Yeah. Where, Cause you already, you know, you're, you have the idea, but then your imagination, it's like, oh, it could be this, it could be that. And to, yeah, you do need that trust uh, to, to, you do need to ha- have that trust, like in collaboration. It's very important. And, and it, ha- I- it happened in the film because there is a, I have a song in the film and it, it happened again when I heard him, what he was doing with it. I was just like, no, 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 that's right. not what, I, yeah. that's not what I wanted. Yeah, but yeah. then you hear it in the end and it's like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I got, I got very lucky with this, uh, with this group of people, which is cool. So I think there's something too worth mentioning about collaborating creatively because so many artists work in isolation mm-hmm. and that is something that a lot of people have to grapple with. Yeah. The, the the extreme, you know, solitude when it's wanted is a pleasant thing, mm-hmm. but but when it becomes isolation when and it, it circum- turns into circumstances force you, yeah, there. like loneliness. And I know that um, you know, in certain <clears throat> certain larger cities, there are like creative cooperatives that will rent like a large space where people can go and just kind of be working in close proximity to other artists, so yeah. that to help fight that isolation for sure. So I think that I remember going into the film project. That was something that I was looking forward to the the excitement of working with other people because my back I have no background in film like I really am an imposter in this industry but I do have a background in in the arts I grew up singing from the uh, my earliest memories I always sang and I played in bands and I also was in theater for many years so I was used to doing you know large scale collaborative stuff in mm. in bands and in theater and when I left that and I guess when I started doing, you know, song, songwriting on my own, there, there was a solitude there that I was not really used to. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I ever really got used to it. The har- I have to say the hardest part about doing any film project for me is always the editing. And it's not the skill. It's not the challenge of the editing itself. It's the extreme isolation and the the length of it. And it seems that... It's, if I remember correctly, I've done three feature films, and I believe that every single one of them was edited throughout the winter. Yeah, which is long. Yes, and yeah. dark. Yep, and isolating to begin with. Mm-hmm. You know, and it just—it's so hard. Like by the time I come out of it, I'm so, <laughs> I'm so worn out, and yeah. so like just craving l- sunlight <laughs> and people yeah. and. Yeah, it's very challenging. And with this one, it was strange because it's the first time I I actually wrote a script, a fictional story. And I think because I played one of the characters, it actually like did play some some tricks. Yeah. On in my mind, you know, it was it, I the lines started to blur between right. the world that I was live that I should have been living in the real world and the world that I was working in yeah that's the it can it can happen I mean and I think I think especially I mean Canada especially is a very good example of that like artists from all stripes uh we are I think some of the toughest because we do this to ourselves in some of the harshest conditions uh you know it's it's winter it's dark and and we're like oh let's lock ourselves inside and yes exactly 14 to 16 hours you know working on this thing with no sunlight (laughs) and so it's it is the but uh in spite of that we have such a uh we have such a supportive um you know community across um across Canada and, and, you know, in many different, um, disciplines and all that stuff. It's very heartening to see, you know, and, um, just locally, it's, it's insane how the concentration of artists in Moncton. So Moncton, small city Mm -hmm. in a small province, Mm -hmm. right? Huge concentration of writers and visual artists and absolutely loads and loads and loads of musicians and sculptors and potters. And the depth, the depth of talent here is, is, continuously mind-blowing yeah the breadth and the depth yeah it's really Both. cool yeah so i mean if you're looking for collaborators this is a, this is the place to be yep. um yeah i think that that isolation too that to bring it back to that point is is something that i've 
I I live here, you know, by myself, and I really, really um, relish my solitude. Like it's something that has been so important to me in the last couple of years, just in terms of I I you know getting out of a bad relationship, and then I decided to quit drinking, and I've been on you know sober for two years, and all of these kind of things. You know, I've had big, several, you know, pretty momentous life changes within this, you know, span of time. So uh, being being by myself and being cool with that has been really important. And so at the same time, it's um, I'm really looking forward to just getting out with the record and just getting back out to to performing and, and everything like that. So it's it's the process has been very long. And it is, it's been longer than, uh, than I, you know, had originally planned for it to be, but at, you know, I think it's all, all those things kind of go into the, it just builds that, that kind of personal momentum for me where it's like, I'm ready and everything's good to go and I feel good. And then when, you know, everything starts to happen, I'll be ready to, to kind of follow with it. And I won't be, you know, so hesitant or self doubtful and 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 those kind of things, which I think I had uh, definitely you know struggled with in the past about wondering if it's ever you know gonna work or if, if it's even worth it and I think we always have those moments, but I think those are a lot fewer and far between for for me now, which is great. I'm envious of the fact that you're so comfortable in your solitude. Because I'm I'm very extroverted, mm. and I like I like some solitude, little little bits of it. So it's it's strange that I that I do these big film projects because I feel like in terms of my personality, I'm really not a match right. for this. Right. Like it's just because it's this is very solo. Well, work it's, it seems very very group focused, but that's just during production. And yes. production is very short. So for this film, for example, production lasted we did a two-week chunk and then there were some issues that caused us to have to pick up some scenes so I guess in in total maybe two and a half weeks yeah something like that yeah but the editing went on from I was already editing the film like when we had just finished shooting that first chunk and the film wasn't even done I was already starting to put it together so yeah. I edited film from September to the end of May yeah. like almost non-stop yeah and I was alone mm -hmm. for most of that until we got into doing some audio where I would have to sit with John and go over what he did. But that's just like a tiny little bit at the end. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, it's, I haven't figured out how to make that work so that it's healthy for me yet. I'm, I'm yeah. actually like, by the time I'm finished, my friends are all like, oh my God, Colleen, like you have to stop doing this because <laughs> I'll, I just fall into an abyss and I'll yeah. edit for like... 12 hours i'll mm -hmm. edit till four o'clock in the morning i have no sense of time or space mm -hmm. or yeah well you get tunnel vision for sure yeah. that can happen i mean that's something that i'm i'm aware of too and it's like you know you do have to get better at you know recognizing when you know oh, i should get out and see some people see some friends or yeah or, to find balance in absolutely what, in what we do absolutely i i've sobriety has been really great for that for me because it is um, a lot easier to just, you know, understand where the, where the kind of, um, equilibrium shifts are, are happening. And so I'm like, oh, that's, I feel a little weird about that. I'll, I think I need to do this. And it's a lot easier to just kind of address those, those little shifts. Whereas before I, I would probably have no idea, you know, what to do and just keep throwing myself into work and, you know, all the, all the other things that were distracting me from doing, you know, what I should have been doing, which is like getting better at, you know, being a functioning human being. <laughs> Do you feel that you're healing through that experience to, into sobriety? What did, was music a big part of that? Absolutely. This, this record was the reason why I just, like, I just, it was, it's been a really good friend to me and it will continue to be that. Um, Every, you know, every time I would just, uh, cause I spent a whole, almost a whole year just kind of like walking back and forth to, to work, to where I live now across the bridge and in, in, across the Gunningsville bridge and Riverview. Over the Petacodiac River, which Over we've talked about. Yeah. Yes. It's the beautiful Petacodiac with the tidal bore. Yeah. It, it was, it was this very symbolic kind of thing every time. And it was just like, you know, I, I had so much time to think 
and to think about why I was in the position that I was in and just to really, just really look at myself really honestly and be like, what happened that, you know, all, what led to all of this and, you know, to, to really take stock of, of my own kind of life. Um, and yeah, that, that healing process and the record has been all, all combined. Um, so it's been, the record has been very much of a, of a companion, you know, and, and the thing that has been by my side through this whole process. Um, and it's very cool. And, uh, you know, I, I, at one point I was like, I don't want to release it because it's like, what happens when I finish it? And then I have to, you know, and then, then it's out there and then I don't, I can't just like be me and my record sitting it's, here, it's you know, it's like a relationship. <laughs> totally. It's interesting. Cause sometimes art is something that you have to carry. It's like a baby. Yeah. But then sometimes it's something that almost carries you. Oh, absolutely. Or it's a friend that walks beside this you. This thing. Yeah. I mean, this thing got me, got me to, to where I am. I, 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 it's nice that I had the idea to, to do it. And then I didn't realize how much it was going to help me you know, uh, initially. So that, that's definitely something I'm, I'm super thankful for. And it just made me, it really made me appreciate why I actually l do music and why I love music and w what it really means to me. Um, and what it means to, to just to, to me personally and to, and to be able to share it and what it means to, for me to do it in a public space and, you know, all those things, just, just to understand, myself in context and to understand myself as an artist in context is um i think it's really important i think that's something that uh it definitely stems from uh having that experience of having to really go back to the beginning of just to tear all the layers of stuff off and be like all right who who are you and what do you want and what is gonna like what do you need to make yourself happy right now because all this other stuff is not is not doing it and so it was, it was that, it was like the first thing I want is to make music. Like, that's what I want to do. That's the thing that really makes me happy. And it's like, it's, that's, it's not something I'm willing to give up. Not, not now because it's, it's brought me so many other great things. I think at the, you know, when I was mentioning earlier, I thought I was thinking about not doing it. It was, I was just frustrated because it's, it was the easiest thing to blame. Cause it's like, oh, this is all, this is all music's fault, mm. you know? It's like st stupid music brought me all this pain, uh, you know, but it really, it wasn't, it was my, it was myself. I did that. Music was just there. It, it was, was just, just there it was while just you the, were, it was yeah, like, yeah, it was just the window dressing. Guilty to, by association. Absolutely. So that's the, the thing is it's, it's hard to, it's hard to separate that sometimes. I think that, uh, and I mean, in the industry, it's, you know, it's not set up for people to be well all the time. It's very demanding. And there's a lot of reasons for that, and so that's something I'm also very conscious of is uh, is just wanting to do it in a way that's healthy, and to kind of expand on that for other people, and just to say like, hey, this is very weird sometimes what we do, and it's very, you know, kind of crazy. So let's make sure that everybody's cool and good to go first before anything else. I yeah. think that's really important. I think with independent art, like you know, the the downside of it is that. You know, we're, we don't have like uh, funding behind us and we don't have this sort of machine pushing us or whatever. But on the positive side, it, it's, we have control over it. Mm -hmm. We decide how we want to be as yeah. artists, whatever type of art it is that we're creating. It's a, it's a different world. It's changed dramatically just in a short period of time. Oh, yeah. There are so many artists just all out there doing their own thing. Yep. And I think it's really wonderful mm. that the control is coming back in the hands of the people doing it. I don't think it's ever been a better time. I think that some of the greatest art that's ever been made is being made right now. I truly believe that. And uh, especially music. Like, there's some of the greatest music that's ever been created is being made right now. Um, it's I very always exciting. Won I wonder how many amazing musicians existed that just never had the chance to have... That is, you know, their songs heard or how many yeah. amazing art, because so many people have, have worked in the shadows in, in every, every artistic industry. And I will say industry, because that's where, you know, you have these greats that are elevated to the, mm -hmm. the status of being like almost godlike, mm -hmm. but it, it's not that they're, 
it's not that there aren't other people who are of that caliber oh, or yeah. sometimes even beyond. There is it's always just... somebody better. There's always somebody who's going to be doing it better than you. And there's always going to be somebody who's doing it bigger and better. Or there's somebody who's doing it way better who isn't even out there. You know, I think about that all the time. It's like there is some of the greatest art that you've ever witnessed that you'll you you know it's never come out of somebody's basement i think what i like now because though, the, those people exist like, yeah well it's a more level playing field so people have a chance to be to have their work seen or heard oh, or, yeah. or shared in a way that it really you couldn't before because it was being controlled mm-hmm. by or, you know or, monopolized by yeah people don't have people didn't have companies. the access the yeah. platforms now it's just like i mean this is gonna sound trite but it's like there's no excuses like there's no excuse for you to not do you know your thing because it's so easy to just send it out and there's a way to do there's i think there's a way for everyone to figure out a way to to get their art out there if it's important for them to get it out there and that should look different for everyone it it will probably look different for everyone and that's okay there's a lot that you can do without money. There's a lot that you can do just, you know, with being with some creative thinking in terms of how you're going to get it out there. Definitely. But um, I just think it's it's nice that it's more open. It's opened up. Yeah. Because I think the more styles and types of art that we experience, the more as artists it stretches y- what you do. Yeah. And just as people in general, it, it, it enriches us. You know, oh, culture yeah. is so important. Yep. Absolutely. That's the thing, and, and we we need we need that. We need everybody to be out there and to be expressing and to be, uh, you know, having that ability and that and like um, like we're saying, a level level playing field. Everybody should have the same opportunities to do that. And for know? everyone to be fiercely true to who they are and yeah. not to be afraid of being, you know, avant-garde or mm-hmm. strange or it's like whatever you want to make, just make it. Yes, absolutely. And, you know, yeah. I think I, that's th- wonderful. Those, those are the things that I, I love seeing is like when I, when something is well and truly uh, just way out of left field and somebody is doing it really well and, and doing it because they want to do it. You can tell when people are, are, um, authentically jazzed about what they're doing and they're doing it in such a clever way. Yes. And I think that their creation, you may not even necessarily be able to connect with their creation if it's like just too far out of your realm of understanding, but you can still be really excited by their passion, absolutely, by their excitement, by their, I think there, you know, we can connect in different ways. We don't always connect through, a shared liking of something you could just connect with like you know i actually don't like what you're doing but i so love how excited you are about yeah. it you know i think and i think it's important to that we support each other too and not you know not have this competitiveness and no. i think that that's what happens when it's when there's a monopoly mm-hmm. you know it creates competition because there are only so many slots but when it just becomes open where it's like oh you do what you do you do what you do and we're just going to celebrate all of it isn't this yeah, wonderful and absolutely. let's just all you know expose ourselves to what what is out there and just take it in breathe it all in and just For celebrate sure. it that's why that's why i don't have anything bad to say about nickelback <laughs> i actually think they're a really good band because you know what i don't what? understand what if, the if, deal is with here's everyone the thing. picking it's on like, nickelback well it's whatever people's reasons but it's like <laughs> if nickelback is a huge band from canada obviously they tour the world millions of fans millions of records sold yada yada i mean they're hugely successful so if their success means like even a slight chance that somebody will look at this band and be like oh they're from canada who else is from canada exactly you know what 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 more do you want because they're ambassadors that's how i see it anybody who becomes hugely successful i mean if they're a bad ambassador then that's one thing but I, you know, I've never heard them say we hate, you know, Canada or anything bad about the country. I'm sure they have said quite the opposite. So, you know, if if they're out there and they're representing, you know, your home, your home team for, you know, in a good way. I would wear a Nickelback toque with pride. Sure. You know what? <laughs> Absolutely. Why not? Because that, because that's the thing. All the, those guys are, are doing it the way they want to do it they're successful i got no gripe with that man like you're you're working i think we have to we have to commend anyone who is putting themselves out there absolutely it's it's a shame that we want to take people down 
we just have we have to keep creating and we have to keep creating in all the different ways that we're inspired to create mm. and i think you know there are a lot of people who feel that they want to do something creative but they're intimidated yeah. because of this fear of failure bringing it back to what we were talking about for anyone listening out oh, there man. you have to who, fail yeah <laughs> the only way you you the you will only you will fail because you have tried yeah. to do something so the only way you cannot fail is to never do anything and to me that's that is what failure is yeah. it's not that is what i that's, would have a hard time living with with yeah. this is my definition of i guess failure and success what what is failure to me is not yeah. doing what i am inspired to do never trying so it. yeah i'm not afraid of of making something that's like a flop what i'm yeah. afraid of is not doing it not at least trying to do yeah, it yeah so that's absolutely. if there's a message i would like to maybe get out there for anybody who's listening to this who because i think there are a lot of people who have these secret dreams of like oh i always wanted to mm-hmm. do such and such a thing some creative thing yeah um don't there's nothing to fear nope. just just do it and you will every time you do it you get better it it, it will change you will evolve. Yeah. There's nothing to be afraid of. Just just go out there and buy your paint supplies or buy your camera or buy yeah. a, a pad of paper and a pen, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Don't limit. It's n- wonderful. Your limitations are, you know, those, you set those for yourself. So... And Just we need you. We need, we need artists. We need all of, we need all of them. We need yeah. all of us. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Don't be, af- yeah, like you said, don't be afraid to don't be afraid to try something because that's the first, that's the first step to, to figure out what, you know, you want to do. Yeah. And, you know, you need to, you need to fail because you need more important than figuring out exactly what you want to do is figuring out what you don't want to do. And yeah. I've said this over and over and over again to many, many people. And that's how you people. figure it out by things not, sometimes by things not exactly. working. Exactly. You need to figure out what you don't want is sometimes that's more important and it just helps you, you know, get your gets guides you along the along the path and kind of points you in the right direction because it's yeah it's difficult to start out and you know you just you don't have a a a northern star as it were to to say like oh that's where i'm going Mm -hmm. or that's where i want to get to so it's a it's important to just start and and just you know throw it out there and see what see what sticks and see what doesn't and as long as it feels good to you that's that's what matters, you know. Do like I did with this film. Just fling yourself over the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> just fling yourself over. The wings will grow. Open the box <laughs> yeah. on your doorstep. <laughs> yeah, just, dive right in. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, when things get crazy, there's always really good food, which is how oh, I'm going yeah. to segue into the end of this podcast. <laughs> this ha- actually has nothing to do with the film. It just has to do with Ryan mm. and the fact that he actually works at my favorite restaurant in oh, Moncton. Nice. <laughs> So I thought we have to get this in there. Absolutely. Because seriously, I mean, this food Calactus, is insane. Calactus is, is a wonderful, wonderful place to work. I I love my job and I love the play, people I work with and my boss and everything. It's it's a, it's a truly magical place um, that I look forward to going to every day. And uh, that's very, I think it's very rare for... Uh, jobs in general but also in probably very rare for just restaurant jobs because it's an industry that it's, has its share of uh stereotypically terrible you know tropes and everything like that but uh mark's created such a great environment and there's such great people there so that's what the, that's what everybody who works there says yeah it's awesome love it so my favorite meal there is the half indian pizza very good choice and the half beet salad oh, yes. and i'm i'm mentioning mentioning this because i have a friend in saint john who i hope is going to hear this who is very terrified at the thought of eating like a vegetarian pizza with okay. it's veggie pate right on the it pizza is, yeah yeah and i'm so determined to get him to try this What's if you uh i think i'm not going to say his okay. name well but if you're listening you're you're missing out. Yeah, you you know I'm talking to you if you're listening. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. So I'm I'm trying. Come on by. I'm trying don't, to get. Don't be him. scared. Yeah. Come on in. If I ever do get him in there and you're in the kitchen, I'll Absolutely. I'll introduce you. <laughs> we'll 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 set you up. Don't worry. You're in good hands. Yay. Well, thank you so much, Ryan. Thank you very much. For I mean, having me. thanks again for for being in the film. It's I remember the day that we shot. Mm-hmm. I was so. It, it was the first time that we actually met. And when you smiled, I was just like, oh, there was just this real, like, 
a shy sweetness and it, it comes across so beautifully on camera. Like exactly the way you looked when I met you and you did that. And I thought, oh my goodness, this guy seems so nice. When I was editing the segment, mm -hmm. that is like exactly what the camera captured. Oh, that's it's great. very genuine. It's really beautiful. It's, um, yeah, it, I can't imagine that scene with anyone else with any other song. It was like just so perfect. Nice. Well, so. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. And uh, yeah, it was a real pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. So, yep. Ryan, uh, how can people find your music? You can find me at Ryan Hillier, H-I-L-L-I-E-R. That's R-Y-A-N, H-I-L-L-I-E-R dot net. Moncton has <laughs> loads of talent. New Brunswick has loads of talent. We do. It's a we great, do. it's a great place uh, to, to make, you know, to, to create and to, to uh to get out there and to see a lot of amazing amazing things so get out there there's there's stuff right next to you you can probably find it very easily and and indian pizza and half indian pizzas at galactus <laughs> thank you thank you so much for listening to the odyssey of petal and moth till next time take care <laughs> Sitting in the shade of an apple tree Waiting for my baby to come sit by me Lonesome for so long, it's the way she's gone Off to fight for liberty Grew up side by side and we fell in love And we built a little home we were dreaming of Papers came and she had to fly Come back to me baby, baby bye bye Baby left, she made this promise I'll be with you forever and always This apple tree will grow and thrive And that's how you'll know I'm still alive Grew up side by side and we fell in love And we built a little home we were dreaming of Papers came and she had to fly Come back to me, baby, 